Micro's Fire presents. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Riker's Iron, Mini Crate Adventures Volume 4, featuring Ashes to Ashland. Ashes to Ashland is the fourth mini crate from Privateer Press. It's an alternate sculpt to the uh, Ashland Delise model, uh, the Warcaster from Mercenaries. To be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if it's a if it's an alternate sculpt to be used for that model, or if it's going to be an alternate sculpt to be used for uh, a future release of Ashland. Uh, maybe an updated version with um, the mercenaries and the pirates and things like that being updated later this year. Uh, in any case, I'm very excited about this miniature. It's it's a very it look, it looks very creative in comparison to their previous ones. The Geist of Christmas yet to come. Uh, it was a very nice mini. It's a very nice model. Uh, it's a little. Pre I don't want to say it's a little predictable, but uh, it's very simple. Um, the Plaid Piper of Ord was also uh, a very simple, but uh, a lackluster model. With Ashes to Ashlyn, it, the concept art and the concept uh, behind it looks really nice. The flames and the wings and the whole angel kind of concept uh, just looks very, very intriguing, and it looks like it's going to be a really fun paint. So let's dive into the our triple review. So the packaging, the contents, and the miniature itself, the quality of the mini. Uh, also as a little bit of a treat, stay tuned after the video for a ranking of the current mini crates. So the top three of my choices for the mini crates thus far. So ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, let's take a look at the packaging. Um, in the future, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any sort of review for the packaging. The packaging has not changed in the past four mini crates. Um, if it does change, we will do a review of the packaging, but this will be our last one, uh, specifically because I want to mention something particularly uh, special that I didn't really notice until uh, one of our Twitch viewers pointed it out to us. The mini crate package is a great package. It's solid. It's a nice solid box. It's really thick. And one of the unexpected bonuses, uh, I know I talk about in our previous reviews, um, storing things and protecting, you know, models or uh, any sort of bits or anything like that. Uh, but there's a little bit of a cool, um, maybe it's an intended purpose, I'm not sure, by Privateer Press, but uh, the Mini Crate can hold uh, your Privateer Press paint pots, so your standard paint pots of this size, it can hold 15 of these bad boys, 15 of these paint pots, which is which is great for travel, which is great for storage. Uh, I'm going to show you here, if you want to take a peek, um, just my mini crate from last from last month, and there it is, 15 paint pots fit square inside, you can, even if you have some paintbrushes uh, that are a little bit shorter, you can drop them inside there. So. The packaging, as usual, you uh, you guys and gals at home, is very nice. It's very it's a very good uh, it's a very good package, and a lot of use can come out of these. Uh, and I hope that people are um, are going to find other uses for this that will surprise us. So, the review for the packaging is uh, I'm not going to say perfect. It is great, though. I, I I I would say perfect, except on the bottom they always put our shipping label and it ruins the bottom of the box when you try to take it off. So, packaging is great. Okay, so we've looked at the packaging. Let's dive in and take a peek at the contents inside the box. Um, what am I expecting inside the box? Uh, I'm expecting two things. I'm obviously expecting the miniature. So the miniature itself, all of its parts. Um, it feels like it's partially resin and partially metal. Uh, which, just like our uh, Feral Geist from last uh, last mini crate, it's probably going to be the same thing. Um, I'm also expecting the collector card inside here, and uh, who knows? Maybe something else. I don't know. We've 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 had some uh, coupons and things like that given to us in the past, so I'm just going to cut this open now. It's a really tough box here. Sorry, I'm just going to pull it away for a second to see if there's any... Okay, perfect. Okay, so... Uh, there it is. Contents of the box. We have... 
the Ashes to Ashland model right there, and we'll look at her shortly, and the collector card. So the contents itself, the sweet collector card right here, really great uh, art on this. I really love when they, when they do this stuff. This is probably my favorite part about any sort of game design or miniatures game is looking at the, how they build up and come up with these characters and go through the process. From the scorched earth of her homeland she rises like a phoenix. That's pretty damn cool. Very very awesome. Very very nice. And the contents of the box. It looks like we got all the parts there. We got her two arms. We got her two arms. We got her wings in the back and we got her uh, herself. So contents you guys. Contents is exactly what I expected so I'm going to give this a perfect rating. So let's uh, let's take a look at the pieces, each individual piece of the miniature. We're going to be looking for mold lines, bad gaps, um, squished pieces, uh, lacking of detail, uh, any, any any sort of thing like that that we can uh, we can notice about the miniature, and we'll give our final rating after that. So let's display the pieces. So here are all the parts for Ashes to Ashlyn. We have her two arms. We have uh, the character herself, and we also have the uh, the flaming wings. So let's dive in, take a little uh, look at each individual piece, and we're going to start with the hands here. We're going to start with the arms. See if we can notice anything right off the bat. Um, there's a small itty bitty mold line going up the arm. It's nothing, uh, nothing to, nothing to write home about. But the detail on this is really nice. It's got all the little armor overlaps. Each individual finger is there and perfectly, perfectly detailed. It's very nice. It's even got a nice little nub for people out there who don't want to do pinning. That's very, very, very clean. Very nice. Let's take a look at her sword arm. Her sword arm is bent. Not pretty typical from Privateer Press is to have their uh, their metal pieces, their pointy swords, and all that really bent. This is the least bent I've I've received in a while from their stuff. But um, I don't see any bad mold lines that'll be a pain to remove. There is one that goes up the side here, but it's very light. Easily removed, easily shaved away. The sword looks kind of small and weird, but I guess that's kind of her her thing. But it's very detailed. Very detailed. It's got the nice little vents. Vents around the top of the sword. It's got uh, all the fingers are there. You can see all the fingers, all the little divots and, and uh, rivets on the on the mini, even the, the belt straps and belt buckles. It's very clean. It's not as detailed as if it was in resin, but uh, it's still a very, very nice piece. Let's look at the flaming wings. Well, what can you say about flaming wings? They look like flames. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, they do have some sprue stuff on there that can, that's going to be removed, but there's no uh, there's no awkward mold line that of our big chunky bit that goes through or over anything. It's, it's a pretty nice piece. I really w uh, wish that they sold some of these pieces uh, separately in a few of these, but I know that the molds get destroyed after. So, so this is her. This is Ashlyn herself rising from the flames, maybe ascending. Who knows? It's uh. Maybe a little bit of shadow on there for you guys. So if you can kind of see, she's got a really nice face detail, which is good. Usually these models don't. She looks very calm, which is cool. 
mold line that goes down the sides, but they're hardly noticeable. I don't even see. I don't like in, in some places. I don't even see it. It's just just right along there. In terms of gaps, if you're pinning or not pinning, it doesn't seem like these are gonna have any sort of bad gaps to fill. Uh, you might not even need to pin it if you're doing a display piece. Uh, if you're doing a model for the tabletop. It's a possible that you're going to have to have to pin it, but if you're just doing display, you might not need to. The nub is pretty deep, and it fits quite perfectly in there. Um, everything is 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 clean. It's clear what everything is. It looks very nice. The flames are detailed. They wrap right around her. Let's see how she looks with the flames on the back. If you wanted to, you could make her like a like an objective. Just have this on there. Very nice. It's got a last little shadowed spin of her before we do our final review. So the miniature itself, you guys, uh, it's you crew out there who are still debating whether to sub to Mini Crate I feel like the Swamp Horror and this one has been our uh, kind of reasons to, to, to sub. This is a really cool model. I like the concept. Um, how would we rate the model in terms of uh, detail and molds and gaps? Uh, I would say it's perfect. I don't have any complaints about this. Um, the only thing I would say is I wish that it came in resin just to have a little bit more detail, just to have deeper uh, deeper recesses. So I would say, uh, I would say, I would say uh, between great and perfect for this, for this miniature. So for those of you at home wondering what I think about this miniature now that we've done our unboxing, uh, Ashes to Ashland is a great model. It has a lot of great detail. It's a very uh, unique piece. I like the look of it. I like the idea behind it, the whole Leilies. Warcaster rising up from from her ruined city to strike back at the Kidorian invaders. It's a very awesome model, and I have a feeling that this model specifically will be a huge amount of entries at uh, Lock and Load 2018 for the P3 Grandmaster. Um, even I debate uh, changing up my entry to feature uh, her in a battle group or her on her own. Um, I, there's not really much else to say. It's, it's, it's a great mini. I would highly recommend you at home getting a hold of the mini crates. Um, this is a prime example of the quality of minis that, that will come. It's a great job, Privateer Press. Uh, this is a great miniature. It's exactly what I want from a, from a mini crate. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the community's paint jobs for her, the unique um, spins on her that, that come from it. And I know myself and my viewers on Twitch were looking forward to diving into this mini and providing a, uh, a, a unique spin on her, a Riker's Iron spin. Uh, so if you want to catch those painting days, it's Mini Crate Mondays, 7 p.m. Eastern uh, on Twitch. You can find us at twitch.tv slash Riker's Iron. So what do I think about the Mini Crates? Where would I rank the Mini Crates so far? Uh, we've had four Mini Crates with five miniatures, if you are a VIP member. So the Mini Crates thus far have been um, the Swamp Siren, Plaid Piper Aboard, the uh, Geist of Christmas Yet to Come, Ashes to Ashland. There was a bonus mini from last uh, video that I forgot to mention. Uh, De Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. So it's a it's a it's a cheeky take on Gorman De Wolf, who's a uh, alchemist uh, solo for the mercenaries. Um, in our previous video, we had ranked um, the Swamp Siren, Feral Geist and uh, Plaid Piper. Uh, that Plaid Piper should not have been there, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I feel like the, uh, the, the Wolf and Sheep's clothing model should have been number three. So this month's ranking is gonna be changing drastically. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say drastically. It'll be changing slightly. This month, I definitely rank the mini crates in the order of Swamp Siren, Ashes to Ashland, and the Geist of Christmas yet to come. Um, the reason why I don't put Ashes to Ashland above the uh, Swamp Siren is because it's just an, an alternate take on 
a model that already is kind of like that. I mean, yeah, the, the, the original model doesn't have flames and rising up. Uh, it is very awesome. It's a very unique piece. But I still feel like the Swamp Siren was a, uh, was a step into a direction that I hope that the mini crates take. So stranger versions of beasts and um, characters and um, just the different models of the Iron Kingdoms. I would love to see more um, war beasts put into a human-esque form in, or a troll form or something like that. Just something more, uh, a little more unique. And I felt like the Swamp Siren really hit that mark and set the bar very high for me. So we'll catch you next month for the next mini crate adventure featuring Bradigan Pit, a Fight Club take on Bloody Bradigan model, a, a uh, kind of a brawler solo from the Mercenary faction. And if you're interested in catching the second portion of the mini crate adventure, which is us painting these miniatures live, uh, you can catch us on Twitch on Mondays uh, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash Riker's Iron.